Thank you for joining me so much, Jan. I, it's really nice to meet you. Um, can you introduce yourself to the INFORMS members? Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Jan Franco. I'm a professor uh, in operations and logistics management at uh, Tilburg University Great. Uh, in the Netherlands, for those of you that yes. don't know where is uh, Tilburg. Yes. Yeah. And how long have you been an INFORMS member? Yeah, I was trying to think back, but this must have been since I was a grad student, so I would say pr probably more than 30 years. Great. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Very long time. So tell us how you got to where you are in your career. How did you start in this field? How did you get to where you are now? Yeah, so I was trained as an industrial engineer, then did my PhD also in industrial engineering at the Eindhoven University of Technology. Uh, and I, I got really sort of intrigued. Uh, and, and I think I'm still intrigued by all types of operations, processes, whether this is in logistics, supply chain, manufacturing, where modeling and people interact. So I've always been fascinated by the combination. So okay. not, I've done models, but I would say always in the interaction with people. Okay. Yeah. So you were at Eindhoven for 22 years? Yes, yeah, so I you probably, served, served yes. served as the dean of the graduate school? Yeah, so I did. So, so at that time in Europe, it was actually quite common after your PhD to get into a faculty position at the same school in the early 90s. Okay. Now this is, I think this all changed 20 years ago. Yeah. So I joined Eindhoven and I was on the faculty, I think it's 22 yeah. years, yeah, you did the I math did my correctly. Math. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I took up admin positions also, always alongside research. So I never did okay. like full-time admin positions. Oh, okay. So the dean's position of the graduate school was sort of my last role there. It was a university graduate school, but I did it as a part-time role because we had a great team of people that could help out and I could continue uh, teaching and doing research. Yeah. And in that role, uh, I was responsible for all of the graduate programs. So this. This was about, maybe, I don't know, remember the number, but I think probably 10,000 students or so uh, across all engineering uh, and applied science disciplines, yeah. which, which was there. And, uh, I, and we mainly worked to make cross-campus, taking cross-campus courses more easy. So for students, because programs are changing, students, they want to tailor more and more their individual programs. Mm -hmm. So we drastically reduced uh, the core of most programs. Okay. Uh, and allowed students to more and more build their own own degrees. And that was that was really great. So yeah. it was a, a great adventure, and uh, yeah, I did that for four years, uh, laid the groundwork, and 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 yeah, then somebody took over, yeah. uh, who brought in their next steps there, right? So okay. this is how things happen. Yeah. You went from Eindhoven to Tilburg. No, I actually went to Hamburg. In okay. Germany, yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I was for three years there. I was approached, it was kind of interesting because I'd always been at Eindhoven. I don't think anybody, including myself, would think I would never leave there. Right, yes. Um, but at some point, I was uh, approached by Kuna Logistics University, which was actually a brand new private university focusing on logistics and supply chain, uh, which is my field. Mm -hmm. And they, they asked me to be their, their dean of research and sort of help strengthen their international program, build a PhD program, which they had just started. And it was like a new opportunity. And since I'd always been at Eindhoven, I thought, well, I, I can't retire without even having tasted yeah. how this would be to be at other places. And it was really great. It's a fantastic school. It's great to be in a kind of, it was like a startup, right? We just, so going from just the grad school where we already had so many students mm -hmm. at KLU, I think the total student number across everything was 300. Wow. We had just, when I started there, less than 20 faculty. So it was like a, like joining a startup. And, yeah. and this is really nice because you can uh, help shape things together with the colleagues, uh, really with the school from scratch. Yeah. Yeah. Was that unusual that you left a a job of 22 years? At I point. think so, yes. Yeah. Probably after such a long time. I, d I think do people people do change, but it's typically maybe around the moment that they get tenure or so. It's not so common to do this later, yeah. unless people really move into full-time admin positions, mm. right? Which I didn't know. So also the position in Hamburg was part-time administrator, so typically uh, two days a week or so. So I could uh, do uh, continue to do research right. and teaching, yeah. Okay. Thank Mentoring you. PhD students, yeah. Yeah. 
So um, about those students, what's the best advice you can give to some students in this field? So I, I, I think if you look at, the, well, there's many students at many levels, right? But uh, if we sort of focus on, on, the, on, the, on the grad students where I think more of their, uh, so, so masters or PhD, I, I think what is really important is to have your core training in OR, right? If we talk about the informs or analytics in mm -hmm. a broader sense, really make sure you do this very well but always connect to what's going on in a broader perspective. So this could be interdisciplinary, so looking at other disciplines, mm -hmm. like I've always been interested in things with maybe psychology or computer science, um, but also in terms of uh, the application field, right? So, so I think it is really important to also understand the problems that that you are working on yeah. as a uh, as a student uh, as a researcher uh, because the problem is more than a model uh, there's so many other things and the understanding of if we don't understand the problems well enough uh, and sometimes as researchers i think we spend too little time really understanding the problem mm -hmm. uh, and then we we make a perfect model we do all of the analysis the data collection in a perfect way but if it's for the wrong problem it doesn't add any value that's good advice, thank you. So how have you seen the operations management and logistics field change since you first entered it? I think the field as a whole changed. I think also my perspective changed, right? So I was originally in engineering, then I moved to, to, to Hamburg where, where the school was. It was technically a business school, but I would say still with a strong sort of engineering operations focus. And now I'm fully in a business school. So okay. I think I've sort of seen the, the, the different perspectives right. on the field. And I think there have been changes that have been different in different fields, right? If you look at it at a bit more distance, I would say in general, the variety of methods being deployed has increased a lot. I think uh, 20 years ago, yeah, we were doing uh, optimization, queuing, inventory, well, maybe a bit more, but that was more or less it. Very much, I would say, OR in a narrow sense. Uh, but now the variety of techniques that partially have been brought in from computer science, many techniques that have come in from economics, uh, econometrics, and now in the past 10, 15 years with also um, psychology, behavioral economics, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm currently working on projects where we try to bring in uh, theories from organizational behavior, maybe from strategy. I, I think as a field, we need to be very aware that, that, that the modeling perspective on the world uh, has a much wider impact and potential if we really also bridge the perspectives from other disciplines. And I think that has really in the last 10 years or so really become accepted uh, but by us as, as, as analytics professionals, mm -hmm. right? I think probably when I was young, we would sort of look upon disciplines that were not quantitative or math-based as maybe not being too serious uh, and I think this has really changed and I yeah. think this is good good for our field right. yeah yes opens up a lot more for yeah it opens opportunities and it yeah. also dramatically enlarges our impact I right. think yeah. yeah that's great so I wanted to congratulate you on your recent win of the Salzburg medallion from Syracuse University Thank which you. is one of the most prestigious awards in the field of transportation and supply chain management um, tell us what this award means to you and your career. When I heard uh, the, the news earlier this year, very surprised in a sense, uh, and, and also very proud. Yeah. I think both probably at the same time. So, so I think the, 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 the pride comes from the fact that the awardees in a particular year, so I got the 2022 award, mm -hmm. uh, they are being nominated by the winners of the past uh, of the award in the past, the oh, prior years. That's so the academics that 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 uh, had been uh, granted the award included, uh, yeah, massive people in the field yeah. like Howley, Chris Tang, uh, Yossi Sheffi, and then uh, the feeling that somehow I've been nominated by them. I think this this yeah, th this this gives me pride, right, in yes. a sense. So. Uh, 
um, the surprise sort of came. I, I still feel actually quite young in a sense, right? So, so uh, this is I, I think it's sort of my first really uh, I would say career award in mm -hmm. a sense, and uh, I still think I have limited grey hair uh, <laughs> in that sense. So I, I still have many plans uh, ahead in terms of of, right. of what we can do. Yeah. Yeah. So is that an award that's typically given to someone who's at the end of their career, or it sounds like some of the names you named well, know that they're they're not. Almost no. Down, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, it, uh, I think it's very difficult to assert what is the end of a career, oh, right? Yes. But let's say definitely the length of the career that they had. Yeah. Uh, that they, that they had completed at the moment that they got their award mm -hmm. was substantially longer than yeah. my the length of my career. Yeah. That's something to be proud of. Yeah. Yeah. So the medallion is awarded for research, but not only that, the influence that that research has on the field as a whole, including with companies and professionals active in the sector. So can you talk about your experience as part of an academic industry partnership? Uh, I was trained as an engineer, and in engineering it's actually very common to work with. We build models to apply and not bottles to necessarily publish. I think maybe also that in engineering has changed a bit, but definitely in the 90s in the, in the Netherlands where I did my PhD, publications were actually not so important. The thing was to, to immediately create an impact and uh, to illustrate, I think out of my PhD thesis, there was one publication. I think nowadays nobody would even uh, maybe <laughs> graduate even or, or, or find a job based on yeah. that, right? So that was very different. Great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time today. I really appreciate it.